Awesome. Okay, you guys, thanks for jumping on for Mr. Republic team call. It is the last Monday of January 2018, which is crazy. We're already through our first month. Um, I thought it was so perfect today what we heard on the national wake up call. Um, the content for, for me was so inspiring. It really helped me rethink how I want to run my business in a way that makes me excited and makes me happy. If you guys missed the wake up call, I highly recommend that you go catch up on that either tonight or tomorrow. I'm obsessed with the fact that they're going live on the page now. I just feel like it's a different interaction because we get to see people and it's just like more of a personal experience. I think it creates more of a community feel like we get on calls like this tonight. So if you guys missed it, go catch up on that. It was an incredible call. And I'm not going to say anything else because Ashley Kugler is going to jump on and share with us. And she's just had just a freaking insane transformation. And I really would love to, for you guys to hear how she's kind of reviving and running her business and just crushing it. So I'm just going to and hand it over. Killing it. <laughs> okay. So, um, for those of you who don't know, like when I started this business, I started like really explosive. Like, um, my first month I had like success club 27, the second month I had like 52. And so, um, like, and I carried that through for a full year, but like everybody else, I feel like 2017 was a really weird year for all of us. Like we felt growing pains and the shift in social media and things like that. And I actually found myself questioning like whether or not I wanted to continue coaching because I was like, um, and also for those of you who don't know, I have lost 140 pounds. And so I do have a big weight loss transformation and I bring a lot of like real life stuff into that. And for those of you who follow me, you know that, like I'm very open about all my struggles and everything. And I was starting to think like, am I better suited to be like a life coach or am I meant to be a life coach? Which in all honesty was just like me making excuses for myself of like why I wasn't being successful. And so the last year I started working like really hard on myself and I don't even know what personal development book I got it from, but they had talked about loving yourself as an action. And I think that's something that we forget about a lot. And this is kind of like around the time where actually Andrea, um, you and your me first movement. And I like saw that and I was like, it was really resonating with me, which Andrea and I have like completely different styles. Like we could not be further apart in our, the way we coach and things like that. But just the way that she was going about it, I was like, man, like I want to be a part of that, you know? And so I saw that she was creating like a certain like culture with that. And I was really fascinated by that. And so for the longest time, I didn't do anything with it. Like I, I watched her and what she was doing and I was really working on myself. And um, again, 2017, like I had uh, a lot of tragic deaths in my life and just a lot of crap going on. And so that's, I think, why I was focusing so hard on me and like, why am I doing these things? Why do I do these behaviors? And so now like, I don't like to do like resolutions and things like that because I kind of think they end up being crap, but I do like closing a chapter and starting fresh with something new, whether it be like a new day, a new month, whatever. Like I just like starting fresh. And so I also had been following um, some business coaches like uh, Angie Lee and Jen Casey are both um, I follow them a lot and they do like different academies and they do this big buildup and all this launch. And I, so I started kind of thinking about it and I'm like, okay, so how do I take this me first movement, like concept, put my own spin on it and, and launch it. And the thing is, is like the year started off with, um, 80 day obsession, which I am not doing. And I'm like one of the only coaches that I see in my newsfeed, not doing that. But I had like started coming up with this idea for building just like this culture for my challenge groups. Cause I felt that's where I was really falling short. Um, when I would run challenge groups in the past, I felt like I was constantly hustling 
And I mean, generally hustling is a good thing, but it's like, in a certain way, it gets exhausting when you're constantly chasing something. And so like, I really started shifting my focus on like, I'm not going to chase these people. Like, I already know I have something to offer people because people come to me all the time. And like, how do I like turn that into something? And so I really wanted to revamp my challenge groups. And I'm like, you know, I need to start giving, like give these people what they're asking me for and put it into a challenge group so I have something to offer them. So basically what I did was um, I launched Project Unfuck Yourself. I'm sorry if any of you have kids around. But um, I, one day, because I, I came up with the concept, I came up with the name, and I started kind of doing posts that, like, led into that concept like and and that whole thing it's a lot of mind stuff and not just the weight loss and so I would for the two weeks prior I put out little teasers of like um how it had helped me and how it had changed you know my life and how I was applying it and then all of a sudden one day I just announced that I was launching Project Unfuck Yourself and I launched it the way, like I built it up the way Angie and Jen build up the academies that, you know, like the training courses and stuff that they sell out. Because you guys, people don't know, like, yes, we do these challenge groups, but you are creating it. And so if you put it out there, like it's some awesome academy that you can't wait to have them join, they're, they're like, oh, what, what is this thing they're doing? You know, I didn't call it a challenge group. I didn't. So people, you know, they're constantly asking you questions like, oh, what is this? With my little teasers and, and my inbox, like I had to start getting very intentional with my time because it was filling up. And so it's like, you don't have to, how do I say this? I was so busy hustling to create something awesome that I was just spinning my wheels and not creating shit. And so I pretty much just like what I'm running is a challenge group, just like any other challenge group I would run. I added some new things in like, you know, some new things that I had learned in, in personal development and some new concepts and whatever, but people couldn't wait to join it because I gave it a name. I branded it. I made it sound like something awesome. And now like today is actually the first day it started and I, um, what is it? In the last three days, I hit Success Club 14. I think my volume right now for the last three days is like 110 PV. And because people are just like this whole concept of, you know, they want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of a sisterhood or whatever. And another thing that I did was, like I mentioned earlier, about how Andrea and I could not be farther apart in our, you know, the way we present things and, and the things that we're about. Like, I'm about football and swear words and like, I'm such a tomboy. And I would try to filter, I, I mean, I don't try to filter anything, but I would try to like manipulate it to a point that it ended up being not me and it was not authentic. And I can't do anything that doesn't feel authentic. And so like my challenge group started feeling forced and icky. And even now, like when I was coming up with the name Project Unfuck Yourself, I'm like, that's really bold. And that might push some people away. And then I'm like, no, Ashley, you are really bold. And you want to draw in those people who need that from you. And so I realized that by creating that name, I was going to repel some people, but those are not the people who are meant for me anyways. And so now like I am just running this group as my complete authentic self. Um, in the two weeks that I did the little build up where I throw out teasers, I also did two videos. I went live on the first one and I left that up for like the evening and then I pulled it down because I wanted people to have to come back to me and be like, where'd that video go? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to do another one later down the road. So then that would like start that conversation 
where, you know, and, and then they'd come back and catch it. And then I did one more. And the day that I did the first video, I had gotten home because I work a sleep, a night job. And I had gotten home that morning and I was like, oh, I should quick go like change and put on a cute shirt. And then I'm like, no, you are being authentic here. So here I am like showing up in my cowboy shirt. And, and so like, I am just, the people who are in this challenge group and who are doing it, it has me written all over it. And I, I am drawing in exactly the people I want to draw in. And so it's so like empowering and crazy. I don't feel like I'm hustling. I don't feel like I'm having to work for it. If anything, I like almost feel overwhelmed with the response I've had from it. And as far as like, you know, I've been in this business, it's, it'll be five years this summer. And this is the first time that I felt like it's just like, I don't want to say it's easy because every day I am working like my power hour is like a power four hour right now, just because I've had like so much going on. But, um, I, this is like, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, like I, this is the busiest I've been, but it's not, I'm not fighting for, like, I don't feel like it's a fight. I don't feel like I'm trying to sell something. I'm just putting out there what I have to offer. And like when people come to me, um, when we get people like inquiring about things, I know how it is to feel bad about like the price or whatever, but it's like now that I'm doing something that is so me that I've put a lot of me and my heart into, and I'm really proud of it. It's really damn easy for me to set those boundaries and be like, look, like I understand the money thing. Like the first time I ever bought a challenge pack, I used my grocery money for the next week. And you know, like, if you have to save up, like, I totally understand that. And you can, you know, jump in down the line, but there's no like, Oh yeah, I'll let you in. Cause you have a program from someone else. Like I'm, I've like, it's just much easier to create boundaries when it's something that you are like proud of. And you know, you, when you know it's worth it, it's, you're not hustling for your worth to other people because you're just like, it is what it is. Like, I would love for you to be a part of it but you know, my time is worth something. You want to be a part of it because of what I'm putting into it. So, and like I've had, um, and, and I also haven't really been attracting like the wishy washers. I don't know it's, if it's just because, um, I've been so like matter of fact in my presentation with it or what, but I really haven't gotten too many people who are like, eh like on the fence. Most people are like, okay, sign me up. How do I do it? You know? And so I'm really like just attracting my actual tribe and like, you know, my avatar of who I would want as a customer. So, um, I'm seeing, I saw some questions pop up, but I don't, do I use the tracker app? I use um, my Facebook group. I use Facebook groups, but um, the tracker app is like how people log their workouts. But again, like, so my challenge, my challenge group right now, I used to run, I started off running challenge groups in 30 day formats. And then it seems like when the 21 day fix launched, um, we all kind of started doing 21 day format because I felt like by the end of the 30 day ones, you got people going off into the fitness protection program and you know, like they fell off. So they're not answering you or whatever. This time I went back to the 30 day format, but this entire first week. And again, this is my first one. I don't know how it's going to work. We'll see. But this entire first week, I am not even touching on physical fitness. It's all about like, I'm putting stuff about vision boards in there and planning. And, um, I got the idea from Nicole to do like the secret sister for Valentine's day thing. And a lot of these women in this group, they're married and hate Valentine's day. And so they're like, this is so exciting to put like an empowering spin on it, you know, to, like turn it into something good for each other. But so, yeah. And again, like, I don't know if it's going to be beneficial to not bring anything physical into it for the first week, but we're going to find out. Um, 
my typical um, people, like a good majority of them, when they come to me, they have a lot of weight to lose because I've lost a lot of weight. And so I just feel like, I mean, some of you may not have to hit as hard on the mental part of it, but when someone has a hundred pounds to lose, I cannot just give them a workout and a meal plan. Like I, we got to touch on other stuff there. So I'm going to try this out and see how the week of so far, like today we're talking about physical clutter and how that, you know, having a cluttered space affects everything. And they're all just like so chatty and eating it up. And it's so far going really well. And I still, I already have people inquiring about the next month, like the next one I'm going to run. So it's all just, and I think it's, because I've created like that culture, that girl gang that people are dying to be a part of. And it's so much easier to do that than to just, you know, this is a challenge group or whatever. And I'm not telling you guys to all go out and create uh, me first movements or project unfuck yourself movements or whatever. But like, it's so much easier if you find what you are about and what you have to offer because like, I don't mean this in a negative way, but beach body coaches are a dime a dozen. And the only thing that is going to set you part apart is you and what you have to give that person who needs you, who's going to connect with you, you know, because like, if you took one of Andrea's people and sent them to me, they'd probably be horrified. Like, cause we're just, we have different audiences and things like that. So if you like, it just works so well to put yourself into something like this. And then, you know, instead of hustling for like selling challenge packs and, and this morning I sold three challenge packs last night while I was sleeping. Like, because I, you know, it's people that I had talked to and I woke up this morning and I was like, it's just like overwhelming. But at the same time, like a lot of it was, you know, so much mindset shift and, you know, I'm not like, I got to keep going for more because I got to keep making more money. Just like Andrea said, thank you more, please. Like, it, it's just so much different when you shift all of that into a completely different focus. So that's, I guess, do you guys like have any questions or? Let me tell you all the reasons I love everything that you just said. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of notes. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that I, I, loved that you were saying is like, how can I put my own spin on this? And the reason that she didn't get a lot of objections, you guys, and the reason that she didn't have a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, I can't afford this, or I want to get in with someone else's program is because she believed in the value so much, period. So if you guys don't believe in the value of what you're offering, yes, you're going to get objections. You guys will start to eliminate a lot of those objections. And then when you do get one, like Ashley said, you're going to, you're going to say just what she did. Like, Hey, can we focus on a plan for you to save up for next month? You're not going to take it personally. You're not going to think I suck because I got to know what does that mean about my self-worth and all the stupid things that we mind fuck ourselves with. I love that one of your examples was like, and I swear, and that's how we're different. And I'm like, that's cute. <laughs> not the swearing, but like the football and the tomboy thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the other thing that I loved was you took something that you felt like you were attracted to, but you found a way to take complete ownership over it. So it's not about that she was trying to do exactly what I've done. She just asked herself, what would it look like for me? And so I've been doing that so much with myself lately, looking at other people's success in, in certain areas. And instead of me trying to do what they've done, I ask myself that number one question, if I were to do something like this, what would that look like for me in order for it to be aligned with my values and who I am and how I want to run my business and how I want to show up on social and whatever like criteria that I personally want to put. So you guys don't have to think, think about what it is that you would be drawn to that you feel like you would benefit. I love that you put like a week of mindset stuff. Those are usually my most successful groups, but you guys have to ask yourself, like, what is going to get you so excited that you're going to want to talk to people about? And I'm going to talk about this for a few minutes at the end on like some different ways that you guys can, can do that and get yourself into that, like, peak excited aligned state and then work your business. Um, 
the other thing that, oh, you said, I was so focused on creating something awesome that I ended up creating nothing. And I'm like, how often is it that we look at like business strategies and we're like, how can I get this to go viral? Or how can I get this, you know, to have this type of result? And we're so focused on the specific result that we end up doing nothing because we don't own the process. And so I finally, I've, especially, I want to say at least like the last few years, one of the things that I've been very, very particular about with how I run my business is asking myself what feels good, what feels fun, what feels like the path of least resistance, what's going to be the easiest and what's going to be the funnest. And those two have to go hand in hand. and can't be one or the other. So if it feels fun, then it doesn't matter if you get 600 likes or, you know, 30,000 shares or whatever. Like sometimes we see stuff happen because even if you have 10 people like a post, if it really resonates with them, you could get freaking success club, you know, 14 in three days, just like Ashley did. It's not about the huge numbers. It's about how it resonates. And the only way that it's going to resonate is if you take the, how can I make this be super awesome off the table and say, how can I love this the most? How can I feel like this is so me, so in alignment with who I am and what I want to teach and how I want to serve and how I want to show up for other people and how I want to show up for myself. And you take so much freaking ownership over it that you're just happy it's public. You're happy it's out into the world of the interwebs, right? It's just that is the reward, not the result. But the results come anyway. And it may not happen with one post. It may take a series of posts, I'm sure. If Ashley had just posted once about the, you know, kind of leading up to the unfuck yourself, you know, movement that she's creating, then yeah, she's probably not going to get a huge number of people. It was like the series of her building up this anticipation and excitement and people resonating time after time after time, reading all these different posts. They say in marketing, it takes like seven or eight times before someone actually makes the decision to make a move, right? You have to constantly be um, uh, reaffirming something in someone's public space. So maybe it's like something someone sees at a store, or maybe it's like, the fact that Ashley's, you know, using the unfuck yourself, you know, hashtag or, or whatever. And then somebody sees a book title. I think there's another, a book title out there called unfuck yourself. And people are like, oh yeah, the unfuck yourself. That's the Ashley thing. And that's like another one of the seeds of like, hmm, I wonder why this keeps popping up in my peripheral, right? So you guys have it, but you're not going to mind putting in the work. Like Ashley was saying, like I was working more, but it didn't feel like work. That's when you guys know you got it. That's when you guys know that you are on the right track to do something so fucking awesome that whether you get success club three or six less success club 12, you don't even care because you know that the momentum is going to get built to where the results will start coming in because you feel so connected. You're passionate about it. You love it. Other people will start to connect to it too, but it takes sometimes a little bit of process, but you're not going to care about the process because the process is so rewarding. You're not going to feel like you're putting in time that you're not going to get the reward from when the reward is the process in itself. Okay, hold on. I think that was it, but let me just make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, the last thing that I wanted to say is when you said, like, how can I make this so me, even though I'm afraid that, like, some people maybe won't resonate if it's so, you know, a little bit more uh, brash, right? S using polarizing language to intentionally push certain people away is brilliant marketing because. What did she say after that? She says, the people that I'm working with, I'm so happy to work with. Have you guys ever had a challenger sign up and you're like, I don't know how to help you. It's like such an awkward experience. And then you feel bad about yourself because they end up going and finding a different coach. When you guys were really never meant to work with each other in the first place. So if you guys are just so, I know it sounds so cliche in 2018 to say, to be like, be unapologetically you. I know we've heard that so many times on social media in the last like five, six, seven years. But in business, the more unapologetically you are yourself, even if that means that you are more chill and monotone and calm, 
that chill and monotone and calmness will pull it will be polarizing on social media because certain people like me who hate slow talkers <laughs> are never going to sign up with someone like that but other people who can't stand like my energy and how quick i am are them being in my like inner circle would be completely overwhelming to them, right? So it just doesn't even matter what that looks like for you as long as you own it and as long as it feels really good for you because you will push people away that you were never meant to work with and then the people you do bring in, you're gonna feel so rewarded to be able to work with them. You're gonna feel so blessed to have them in your groups and to be able to have that experience with them and they're gonna feel the same about you. They're going to walk away from your group, either having awesome results or referring new people to you, or maybe if it, they are in the experience and they didn't get the physical experience that they wanted, you will have left a lasting impression on them and they're going to be sending referrals to you. They're going to, as soon as someone says, oh, I want to lose weight, they're going to be like, freeze. Let me introduce you to my homegirl, Ashley. Right? Do you guys get all that from what Ashley said? <laughs> Every time you said something, I'm like, genius. Genius. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> well, and like you said about like being so excited to work with people, I have a night job where like tonight I work from 10 in the morning or 10 tonight until eight in the morning and I have a 45 minute drive there. So I would typically get home around nine in the morning and go to sleep for a few hours. Like I know that I'm doing it right because I'm getting home and diving into my laptop because I'm so damn excited. And then by 11 p.m. my eyeballs are hanging in my face and I gotta take a nap. But I'm just so excited to get home and check my messages and see what I'm doing. And you know, like, because I just know what I've created is like awesome. And the thing is, is like, like she said, if you believe it's awesome, they don't know it's not. And so like after I did the launch, which that was my video, like I considered my video talking about it. I considered that my launch. And after it was done, I went and bought myself flowers and celebrated it like something freaking awesome happened and nothing happened, but they didn't know that. And then the awesome stuff happened afterwards because then all of a sudden they're like, holy crap, let, yeah, let me be a part of this. And so, and, and um, in the like tidbits that I threw out to begin with, like the stuff leading up to it, when I would have people join, you know, like I would ask their why, and then I would take those whys and use them as posts. Like I had one girl who joined, she's not overweight, she's never been overweight, but she's just like, you know, like, I just feel like I'm so blessed, but I'm negative a lot. And I'm so drawn to your energy. And I just want to, you know, be positive in my life. And like, so I thought that was a like really good one to share. And um, the likes thing, I am getting the least likes I have ever gotten on Facebook. And I am getting, I don't care. Like I'll get nine likes and have five messages in my inbox. So like the days of, oh, getting your affinity up or, oh, hey, the algorithm is off. Can you please drop it? In? Don't like be you and post your stuff. Because like if you are believing what you're posting and what you're doing, it's going to come. Like, like I said, so much that I'm not even sleeping right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to hack the algorithm and figure out how to hack your own mindset and your energy and you will win. That's mm -hmm. all you have to do. When you get so caught up in the how, that's when we start to mind fuck ourselves, right? And that's when we spin out of control. All of a sudden we're playing comparison games. Like life gets frustrating and we start to doubt ourselves and think like, well, can I really do this? It's because we're so caught up in these external hells. And honestly, you guys, if like you got one thing that you just like really grasped in, in business, it's that if you know the why, I know we always talk about your why, so I'm not going to like go into like, know your why, make sure your why makes you cry. It, that part doesn't matter to me. But if you have an emotional connection to your why, the how works itself out one step at a time. And just remember this, like you don't need to know the next 27 steps. You guys don't need to know how you're going to get to the end of 2018. You just have to know the next one and you just have to have the balls to take that step. That has to be like the, the most critical piece is like, why am I doing this? Why is this fun for me? Because if it's not fun, like, please quit. Go put in your coach cancellation paperwork. We will bless 
and release you and pray for like whatever is going to be next for you. But like, if this is completely miserable, stop. Or if it's been fun at one point, ask yourself, why did this become not fun for me anymore? And go back to why am I doing this and how can I make this enjoyable again for me? So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about for just two minutes. This is really, I don't want to spend a whole lot is like getting yourself into, um, I always say like getting yourself into the mood. <laughs> it's perfect that you're sitting here. <laughs> like, look, we've been married for 14 years, coming 42. up on <laughs> coming 42. up on 15 years. Like, gotta keep marriage spaces. So I use this analogy, right? Like people can understand and grasp the fact like you have to sometimes create the energy or create the mood that you need for whatever required results are coming on later, right? Okay, you guys got that part. We're all grown ups. So you guys have to do the same shit in your business. I in 2018, January, 2018, will not even open my laptop and talk to anybody. I won't check my notifications. I will not check my notifications or my messages or my emails until I'm in the mood. And I mean like peak state of alignment where I just feel so good and feel so excited because if I try to answer them and I'm in this like negative state and I'm like, they're probably, everybody's probably going to say, I'm no, I'm going to get exactly that. So I'm just, it's like you can swim upstream, but it's going to require a lot of effort. But wouldn't it be easier if you just got into an inner tube and just floated down that shit? It's so much more fun, right? Has anybody ever been inner tubing with like a beer in your hand? Best experience ever, right? It's like so good. Fact. <laughs> so I'd rather run my business that way. Like I would rather for it to be like an enjoyable floating party. And so I choose to create and generate that type of energy. So what I want to challenge you guys to walk away with tonight is to create your, like, get yourself into a mood prescription, right? Or we can, people in like the PD world, they call this alignment. I feel like this resonates with more people. <laughs> I think people get it more, right? So I want you to create whatever prescription that you need in order to get yourself into this energy. If you only have two minutes, find a two minute prescription. Like for me, if I have two minutes, I'll jump on my little trampoline and I'll put music in my ears and I will get my, whatever music is going to pump myself up. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this before, but like we forget, it's so easy to forget and try to like force it. And it, like Ashley was saying, success club, you know, stupid amount, what, like six, you said six people or whatever, and seven people in three days. That is because she was in the mood. She was in alignment. She was in that peak state. That is why there's, you guys can look at other people who put the same amount of like actual intention and effort into their business that I have in the last seven years. Why have I gotten better results than some of those people? This right here is the only reason why it's the difference maker. When you're working from the state of alignment, things just flow. Things are just easier. And when you finish a large amount of work, it doesn't feel like work. You'll hear you, you'll say the same thing that Ashley did. I know I spent four hours on this, but it just didn't even feel like work. I'm so excited. I'm sacrificing sleep, but it doesn't feel like sacrifice. That word discipline is eliminated from your vocabulary because you don't have to be disciplined. You're so excited to do it. It's not a discipline. A discipline kind of, for me, makes me feel like, well, I'm forcing myself to do something that I don't really want to do just because I have to or I should. Well, I just don't believe in ever doing anything disciplined anymore for the rest of my life until I die. Who knows what's going to happen in the next life? But I just don't want to live my life that way anymore. I just choose to put myself into this, like, state of being in the mood. And then whatever comes from that comes from that. And I'm super happy with it, but I get results that way. My business is still thriving. I'm still hitting success club 10 to success club 30 a month because I do this work first. If you guys have 20 minutes and you are in a funk, go take a nap and then go work your business. The fastest way to get yourself if you're in a like deep funk, it is like you almost, if you guys are, are you guys signed up for the vision board party with me and Amanda Francis tomorrow night? Cause I'm going to go deeper into this more specifics. If you guys aren't, go get yourself signed up. The link is in my bio on my Instagram and get a lot of wine or I'll post it right here. Um, anyway, or I'll post it into the team page anyways. <laughs> so find yourself your, your prescription for what you sometimes for me, it's listening to a podcast and going on a run. Sometimes it is for me, a lot of times it's listening to a podcast meditation. Sometimes that means like 
going and getting myself a coffee. Sometimes it just means going for a car ride and listening to music or listening to a podcast or whatever. But I will do at any cost, any cost, whatever it takes to get myself into this state of feeling really good, of feeling inspired, of feeling excited, of feeling joy, of feeling passion, whatever word that you want to toss in there. But if I'm feeling anxiousness, I don't start working my business. If I'm feeling fear, if I'm feeling resistance, if I'm feeling negativity, if I'm feeling frustrated, if I'm feeling resentful, anything like that, you will not even see me online. And there's times where you guys will see me like not post for a few days and people are like, did Andrea die? No, I'm just not in alignment. So I'm just not going to get on social media. My business is still growing. My business has not suffered. I know everybody says you got to be consistent. And I believe in consistency, but I believe in alignment first and then consistency because then it feels good. It feels fun. The results come faster. You're more excited. You're more passionate. And then we don't quit because when we don't get like the perfect result, like I said earlier, the reward is the process. And then we don't see really, really awesome people like Ashley Kugler quit Beachbody and go to try to become a life coach, which is actually way harder. <laughs> People always think like, I don't know. They, I hear that all the time. I'm going to quit Beachbody and go become a life coach. I'm like, have <laughs> fun with that. You guys already have a business in the box. Why would you make your business harder? You still have to market yourself. <laughs> you still have to sell that shit. It's the same process, right? Like it's not easier. You just have to get yourself in alignment. I heard someone say like, they use the example of, you know, like, should I stay in this relationship or should I leave this relationship? Well, I believe like business is a relationship. And the response from the other person was, well, you still have to take yourself with you. <laughs> and I just like kind of laughed. I'm like, you're right. Like you still take you and all your set of problems with you to the next endeavor. That doesn't mean that the next endeavor is going to solve your problems. You're the solution to your problems. So you guys alignment first or get into the mood, feel the good feelings feel all the good vibes, whatever you want to call it. I don't care, but just get yourself there first and then do the work. And I'm telling you guys, the results will just be a completely different experience. And you guys will be so stupidly obsessed with your business that you're going to be on the next team call saying, let me tell you everything I'm doing. Just like Ashley is. So that's all I had. Well, and also what you said about like, sometimes you don't post for two days. Right now, I'm probably posting also the least I've ever posted. But I'm in a place where I would rather post twice a day something valuable than crap content. And I also find that when I'm not available to them all the time at their fingertips, they value me a hell of a lot more. So, you know, all you do when you're constantly there for them and you're constantly in your messages and constantly re responding is creating somebody who's completely dependent on you. And I don't like, that's not what I want. I'm not dependent. So I don't want that from them either. So like, don't be afraid to step back. Like this morning I had family from Florida and Connecticut here and they asked me to meet for coffee this morning. And it was our only time we were going to be able to do it the morning of my launch. And I'm like, Ugh. so I scheduled my post last night and everything I was going to do. I got it ready before I went to bed and it posted at 6 30 this morning. I went to coffee and didn't get home until 1 p.m. And I went in there and that group was going crazy and they were talking and interacting. They were just fine without me. And so, and then I popped in and I did a little video and I, you know, checked everything and like, you do not need to be in their back pocket draining the life out of yourself. Like it's just, yeah. Because then you'll want to quit, right? Like three months down the road, you're going to be like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And guess what? It's your fault. It's not, the body. it's not that the system's broken. It's just that you didn't work at how you needed to work it to make it feel good to you. Right. But you can change that any second. I've been doing this for like six and a half years now. So I don't work my business the same way that I worked my business on day one or on year two or on year four, or even six months ago, I'm evolving. So my business evolves. So you guys have the choice to make it evolve with you and do it in a way that feels good and feels aligned. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, I'll post the link to the vision board party in the team page. So that's going to happen tomorrow night with Amanda Francis. She's going to talk about a bunch of like awesome, awesome manifesting tips. 
Um, if you guys have already done your vision board party, doesn't matter, jump on anyway. It's still just going to be like a fun, good time. You guys will get some good content. I'm going to be sharing some new tips that I've been using in the last like 12, 14 months that have just been game changer for me, especially some stuff that I've been really applying into my business in the last, I'd say two to three months. Um, so I'll be sharing that on tomorrow's call as well. You guys are welcome to invite friends, family. It's for anybody. It's not just for people who are in business or coaches. It's just anybody who has a goal, which is like everybody wants something new, right? We're all searching to grow. So, all right, you guys have an amazing night. Thank you, Ashley. I loved and appreciated everything that you shared tonight. We're so, so grateful to you and to your time. Guys, don't forget two days left to buy $145 summit tickets. Oh, good one. And then Team Cup. I wanted to say that too. Get yourself on Team Cup if you're not already registered. Yes. Bet on yourself. You'll win. I love it. Thank you, Ashley. Yes. Good night, guys. Good night, guys.